Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Waifu Wear, the show where we take a look at all those cheap games on Steam trying to bait you into spending your hard-earned dollar at the promise of some digital ass and titty. On today's episode, Evil Maze. Released on June 17th of 2016 on Steam, this title is self-published by the developer, Zov Game Studio. The standard price for this game runs $2.19 Canadian, but goes on sale for around $1. To get the full experience, something I won't be getting here, there's a slew of additional DLC if you're so inclined. This game recently has mixed reception, but its overall aggregate is positive. We're going to see firsthand how much it earns this rating. I beat this game start to finish, and this is what I experienced. First off, we start the game up. You can start a new game, continue an old one, or quit. Where's the options menu? You'll notice the game is windowed and pretty damn small. If you hit F1 on your keyboard, you can open an options menu. In here, you can set controls, turn the music and sound effects on or off, but not adjust their levels, reduce screen flicker, and... Ah, there it is. Let's enable full screen, and... Ouch. Full screen stretches the image, and it just looks awful. I guess playing the small windowed mode is our only option. Sadly, this doesn't even capture properly, so I manually have to crop the video as I capture it. You can tell the developers had issue with this as well if you look at their promo pictures on Steam. You can clearly see white borders on some of these pictures, and on others you can even see their desktop background. Let this be an early sign of how little anybody cared about this game or its success. So with the video finally set up to capture, let's begin the game. I hit to start new game and the game starts. And when I say the game starts, I mean the game starts. I'm immediately in gameplay. I have no idea who I am, where I am, why I am, or beyond the principles of Kogito Ergo Sum, if I am. I appear to be some blonde girl in a prison. Well, let's go to the Steam page and see if they can clear any of this up for me. The description for the game reads, Random Liam and Skills plus Hidden Elements RPG plus Strategy ARPG the game starts in a dark underground maze where a female officer is confined in a prison. She wants to get out of this nightmare maze. Would you like to help her? Well, I guess we know who we are and where we are now, but the why is never answered. This is the story of the game. Anyway, if you search this bone pile, you get your first sword. You can use this to break the prison bars and get out of the first room. <laughs> The game has a full equip menu. At one point, with the right gear, I actually managed to make my character completely invincible for a while, so I can't say balance is this game's strong point. Once you break out of prison, there's lots of enemies around. Simply go up to them and mash F to attack while keeping an eye on your health. Kill enemies to get XP and level up. For the most part, this game is mash F and heal to win. Enemies don't telegraph attacks. In fact, enemies don't attack insofar as they don't have attack animations. If you're close enough to an enemy, you'll simply see your health deplete. If any of you have played Hydlight on the NES, this game may feel familiar. From here, you journey through several floors collecting keys, money, spells, and items until you make it to the end. There are more doors than there are collectible keys in the game, and it is completely possible to get yourself stuck in areas you cannot get out of, or otherwise hit walls that make it impossible to progress. If you run out of keys and have no money to buy new ones, then you're going to have to start over or revert to an older save. It does seem that the devs are aware of this, as you can get a spell that can be used three times that allows you to teleport three squares in any direction. The best part about this spell is that it doesn't fix the issue it's implemented to fix. You can teleport your way into a dead end or between two doors that you cannot unlock, or you can teleport yourself out of bounds. Again, this is something the developers are aware of as they prompt you to save before using the spell, but this far from fixes the issue. Magic uses the MP meter, but the cost of spells makes no sense. Although there's a number to indicate how much mana a spell uses, it never uses as much as it actually says. You can equip spells and items to this taskbar down here to use on the fly during battle. When you use spells from here, they'll have a cooldown before you can use them again. But half the time, you can just press escape, bring up the magic menu, and cast the spell from here anyway. But this only works half the time. It's incredibly inconsistent. If you collect a bunch of items at once, it floods your screen with text that takes entirely too long to disappear. To find good items, you'll want to inspect every unique looking graphic in the game, regardless of how mundane it really is. I like the look of the game, but absolutely hate its level design and pointlessly claustrophobic lighting. 
The sound effects are a mixed bag, but mostly awful. Each weapon makes a different sound effect when you attack with it, and some were annoying enough that I temporarily turned off sound effects altogether. Music in the game sounds cheap, but not exactly annoying. Our main heroine is definitely cute, and her armor changes over the course of the game, which is a nice touch, but this is as good as the art gets. There is an NSFW patch for the game, but to avoid having to censor the whole video, I have not bothered to download it. Battles against bosses tend to take far longer than necessary. With my invincible build, I spent about 10 minutes of just standing still and mashing F on this one boss. The game took two hours to beat, but my total playtime is about three and a half hours. I died a lot in this game, prior to finding my invincibility build. This is mainly because so much as walking past bosses can get you killed in one shot. Once I got a good build, I did not struggle against enemies until the final boss, at which point I'd done something I should have done from the very beginning. I backtracked to a merchant and bought a bunch of items that permanently raise physical defense, magic defense, and physical attack. These items are far too inexpensive for how useful and game-breaking they are. With these and a whole bunch of healing potions, I F-mashed the final boss to death, and that was the whole game. When you beat the boss, you're teleported outside. You get a couple Steam achievements and save your game. There's no credits roll, there's no the end. There's no, your indescript blonde princess is in another prison. At this point, you have no choice but to quit to main menu. Starting a new game has no perks, and reloading this file simply puts you back on a mountain that you can't get off. I can't say this game was fun at all, but I can to a degree appreciate what they were trying to do. I do enjoy isometric dungeon crawlers or overhead dungeon crawlers, and games that are similar to Gauntlet. What I don't enjoy are terribly designed games that remind me of Hydelight on the NES. If you do play this game, use a guide, because much of it will not make sense. For instance, at the very beginning you can rest on your bed to restore HP, but only sometimes. There is a stat-related mechanic that dictates when you can and cannot rest here, but nothing will ever tell you what that is. And that's Evil Maze for you. This game is definitely the definition of waifuware. A complete shovelware game with a shoehorned in waifu to boost sales. If you guys liked this video or found it helpful at all, you know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Links to socials are in the description. Share the video if you can. As always, folks, thanks for watching. If you guys want to see more waifu wear videos, try clicking that playlist on your screen now. I promise you won't be disappointed.